Good morning, everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the refractories. What are refractories? What are the classification of the refractories? And the important properties of the refractories? And the different types of the refractories with the examples we are going to see today. Definition. So generally, these refractories are they are the non-metallic materials. They are not the metallic materials, but their physical properties and then chemical properties are going to be completely different to that of the, the existing the constraints which you are going to consider in case of these the refractory materials. So they are the non-metallic materials which can withstand the high temperature. So generally, more than 600 degrees of temperature, we will be using these refractories for different purposes. Here, yeah, these refractories, they can retain the strength at high temperatures. And even the according to the ASTM C71, the, it, the definition for the refractories is, is the, nothing but these, the non-metallic materials, which are having those, the different chemical and the physical properties, which are made useful for the different types of the, the important applications and also the structures also studied, okay, which can withstand a temperature above the 1000 degree Fahrenheit. Or you can, it's also given here, you can study, you can see this, the 800 Kelvin or the 500 degrees of the temperature also can be used. So these are the refractory materials which can withstand the high temperatures, okay? And these materials, they are chemically and also, also physically stable and then chemically inert also at high, high temperatures. The refractory materials we can use uh, for different types of the chemical reactions, okay? In many chemical reactions, we can make use of them so that the chemicals like acids or the bases or the alkali or any other concentrated substances if we are using, if we are considering on the refractory metal also, it will remain unaffected, where even the physically also it can withstand the high temperatures. Okay, physical properties are also going to be very good with respect to this refractory material. And if we consider the, the different types of the, the meta, metallic elements like oxides of alumina, oxides of silica, okay, silicon dioxide is nothing but a silica, okay, and the magnesium or the magnesium oxides, generally they are the most important materials which we are going to use in the manufacturing of the refractory materials. So the refractories are the non-metallic materials which consist of the metallic substances, which consists of the oxides of the metals here. So the oxides of different types of the metals like aluminium, magnesium, silicon, silicon, such type of metals will be using in the manufacturing of these, the refractory materials. And in order to, these refractories are widely used okay, and then the important uh, uh, applications of the components of the refractory materials are widely used in our day-to-day -day life in industries or in the chemical or the pharma industries we are going to use these the refractory materials widely and in order to behave like an ideal or in order to act as a very good refractory material okay they should possess certain characteristics so what are the important characteristics of these the refractory materials that we'll discuss now? So different types of the characteristics are there. First one is it should be resistant towards the heat. So it means as we have seen in the definition, it should have the withstanding temperature was more than 1000 Fahrenheit degrees or the more than 600 degrees of temperature also it can withstand. So such type of material is said to be a, a very good refractory material. That is first one is with respect to the heat. Second one is resistance against corrosion. So these materials, they are, they are resistant, they are going to be resistive. Uh, they are going to have the very good the resistance property with respect to the corrosion property. Corrosion means nothing but the destruction, deterioration or dis disintegration or the decay of the solid matter when they are in contact with the environment. So to these materials, they are going to be have the, the very good resistance property when compared to the, the, that of the other, uh, the non-metallic materials. So here, this, the good refractory, it should be resistant towards the corrosion and also the heat also. And then this fusion temperature should be high in case of the refractory materials. Whatever the refractories, maybe the acidic refractories or the basic or the neutral or the different types of the refractory materials, they should have the high fusion temperature, okay? Fusion means nothing but the combining property. Whereas a fission is nothing but the dividing or splitting or separating is nothing but fission. Whereas a fusion is combining, okay? And also these 
all these refractories they should be chemically inert inert mean in the sense they are stable they should be uh, towards the acids towards the chemical substances towards the basic substances towards the alkali substances or whatever the different types of the chemical substances that we are considering on the the surface of this refractory material they should they should be stand they should be stable towards that material they should not undergo any sort of chemical reactions with that of the chemicals which you are considering on the surface of these or when they are in contact with these chemical substances so the refractory materials should be chemically inert they should be chemically stable with okay that is also one of the important property with respect to the a good refractory material and then this refractory material should not undergo any deformation any changes with respect to the physical or the chemical properties of that particular compound or the components or the materials should not take place means the certain if you are heating it should not um, deform or should not the size of the size or the shape of the refractory material should be same it should not change it should not change or the the bondings with respect to these refractory materials should should be inner then only it can undergo the different types of chemical uh, this the process and where we are going to use it widely also and they should not undergo any deformation any changes with respect to the shape or its structure or if not with respect to its composition also so that is also one of the important characteristics you not know, to behave like a, a good refractory material then next is uniform expansion and the contraction so this this material the refractive material they should have the uniform common expansion and then the contraction also means uniform is similar similar okay or the common or the same the expansion and the contraction should be there for this type of refractory materials then we'll see the different types of the refractory materials based on the different methods okay these refractories are classified here one is based on the chemical nature one is based on the method of manufacture one is based on the fusion temperature fusion already we have seen them fusion is nothing but a combined fused nothing is combined to each other so the fusion temperature combined temperature so like that also they are classified we'll see one by one now on the basis of the chemical nature they are classified into three types one is acidic refractories one is a basic refractories one is a neutral refractories acid refractories uh, we are going to see we are in our syllabus we are going to have this the acid refractories basic refractories and neutral refractories we are going to see separate, separately about these refractories and with examples so in this the basic based on the chemical nature they are classified into acidic acidic materials are acidic constants are used in the preparation of these acidic refractories and the basic refractories basic substances and the neutral refractories neutral elements we are going to consider neutral constants we are going to consider in case of the neutral refractories here and based on the method of manufacture different types of methods are there dry press process fused cast hand molded formed then formed also it is of different types here normally normally they can be formed or five or chemically bonded by the different types of the the refractory materials we can synthesize or we can prepare by making use so we can manufacture by making of this method that is form method when unformed method if you consider the monolithic plastic monolithic plastic or if not the ramming and gunning or if not the mass okay or the castables mortars dry vibrating cement such type of the non formed unformed sorry unformed method of uh, manufacturing uh, unformed method by using the method also we can we can manufacture we can prepare the refractory materials even the dry refractories also can be prepared by making use of the unformed method so these are certain the refractories methods by using these methods also we can define we can prepare we can manufacture we can synthesize or we can produce these the refractory material one is dry dry press okay one is fused cast one is hand molded one is formed under formed different types are there again unformed and again that last unformed for the dry refractory materials that is with respect to the method of manufacture and the based on the method of fusion temperature they are classified into three types one is normal refractory second one is high refractory third one is super refractory based on the fusion temperature these different types of the refractory materials are prepared here so since generally these the the 
this type of refractory materials we are going to call them as a high grade refractory material especially the super refractory and high refractory because of having the more fusion temperature okay so we'll see some example for this and then even the temperature also we'll discuss in this map normal refractory if you consider the fusion temperature of this normal refractory is it is varies from 1580 to 1780 okay that is what the the fusion temperature of the normal refractory fire clay is the best example for this normal refractory 1580 to 1780 it is going to vary in case of the high refractory the fusion temperatures will vary from 1780 to 2000 degrees celsius chromite is the best example for the high refractory whereas in case of the super refractory zirconia it is a refractory uh, which is called as a super refractory which is going to withstand okay the fusion temperature will be almost 2000 degree more than 2000 degrees of the temperature it can withstand that is one of the, the very good properties of this the the super refractory materials so fire clay chromite zircona are the certain refractory materials are the certain refractories refractory materials which are going to have the more fusion temperature so this is what the the types of refractories based on the chemical nature based on the man, method of manufacture based on the fusion temperature this classification it is it is described here okay next types of refractory with respect to our syllabus we are we are going to discuss we are going to discuss about the acidic basic neutral and then super refractories okay so <clears throat> this generally refractory is based on the chemical just now we have seen the chemical nature method of manufacturing and also based on the fusion temperature they are classified so generally based on the nature okay that is uh, the, whatever the, this uh, chemical nature if you consider they are classified into four types one is acidic basic super and the neutral refractory so what are acidic refractories that we'll see with example this is acidic refractory so here just it consists of the the silica okay it is a refractory which composed of the which consists of the silica and it is going to react at high temperature with bases such as lime alkalis and then basic oxides so these refractories are com mainly comprise mainly consists of the silica and then it reacts at the high temperature with the bases like lime okay lime is nothing but calcium hydroxide alkali is sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and the basic oxides nothing but the metallic oxides we are going to consider in case of acid refractory and not only that these acid refractories are widely used okay in areas where the slag and then atmospheres are acidic in nature so in such cases we these acidic refractories can withstand it but they are easily they are stable to acids but attacked by alkalis so these are nothing but the acidic refractories which are with respect to the acids only it can withstand but with the alkalis if they interact with them then it is going to form a chemical uh, the reaction there so these refractory materials are acidic are with respect to the the acidic nature of this they are going to possess this acidic nature but it consists of the it consists of the the different types of components or the constituents like silica alkali lime and the basic oxides we are using them in the in their manufacturing or in the the preparation process okay and the main components of these refractories are silica along with alumina alumina is al2o3 silica is silicon dioxide sio2 these are the main components of this the acidic refractories the steel industries generally they are the the largest consumers of these acidic refractories in steel industries they are widely use this acidic type of acidic type of refractory materials this is about the acidic refractories basic refractories generally these are the areas where the slags and the atmospheres are basic there it is acidic here it is basic and they are stable towards alkali but reacts with acids so the acidic substances can easily react with the basic refractories whereas the basic refractories basic materials like uh, alkalis they can in easily interact with the acid refractories so in case of the basic refractories they are they, they are withstand they can they are stable towards the alkaline materials but reacts with the acids here yeah. that is what the basic refractories and the main raw materials which are used in the manufacturing of these basic refractories are magnesia in case of the acidic 
silica and then alumina l2o3 sio2 and certain basic oxides we used in the manufacturing of the acidic refractories but whereas in case of the basic refractories we are using magnesia that is mgo which is one of the a common example for this includes the dolomite mark where the magnesium oxide is a raw material and the certain examples for this basic are nothing but the dolomite and then chromo magnesia nothing but pr2o3 plus mgo and in case of the dolomite mgco3 plus pso2 magnesium carbonate and then calcium carbonate so the combination of magnesium carbonate and calcium carbonate it is going to form this dolomite here and whereas the chromo chrome the magnesium if you consider it is going to contain the cr2o3 plus mgo so these are the the certain examples for the basic refractory materials the next third one is the neutral refractories so generally these are the refractory materials which are used in areas where slags and atmospheres are either in acidic or the basic both the mediums can be considered and they are chemically stable towards this acidic and also the basic substances so even with this particular the neutral materials neutral refractory materials they can withstand they can be stable towards the acids they can be stable towards the bases also and in case of these uh, acidic they are stable only with respect to acids in case of bases they are stable only with respect to the basic substances but the but bases basic refractories are easily attacked by the acid substances acid refractories are can undergo the reaction with the alkalis or the basic substances but in case of the neutral refractories they are stable towards the both acids and the bases and the some common common examples for this are the alumina l2o3 chrome that is cr2o3 and carbon these are the three examples with respect to the neutral refractories so we can use these type of neutral refractory materials okay both uh, acidic and the basic substances are combined in this and uh, we can use them as a neutral bricks to avoid this the chemical interaction there so generally the neutral bricks if you consider the neutral nothing but the neutral refractory materials are mainly made up of the graphite graphite which consists of the carbon as a chief constituent and then chromites so the neutral bricks are made of graphite and then chromites this is about the the neutral refractories super refractories super refractories generally they are um, they are going to withstand and are going to have the temperature more than 800 de 1800 degrees of temperature and then more than that the fusion temperature will be there for this right so here these super refractories are the the refractory materials with respect to the fusion temperature these are classified and they are widely used and they can also called as a high grade refractory materials also because of this its exceptional high temperature which is um, more than greater than 1800 degrees of temperature so they are manufactured for certain exceptional the high temperature purposes and so zirconia is the best example zr o2 okay zr o2 is the best example for the super refractories whose melting temperature is almost 2342 2550 degrees celsius similarly the thoria tho2 thoria its melting temperature is the 3200 degrees of temperature see that is what the high temperatures okay so 18 the 2300 2500 to 3200 they are the high fusion temperatures or the high withstanding temperature of these super refractories most of the industry people they will be preferring these super refractories and some people they will be preferring high refractories also high fusion temperature refractories also they will be preferring in the industries and then what are the important properties that these refractory materials should possess what are those important property how many properties are there means almost 13 important properties it should away it should it should possess the all the refractory materials should possess that is refractoriness passing strength or the refractoriness even under the load and the dimensional stability chemical inert inertness thermal expansion okay and then thermal conductivity porosity thermal spalling resistance to abrasion or the corrosion electrical conductivity heat capacity texture permeability okay these are certain important properties of the refractory materials and these are certain examples with respect to the 
with respect to the the different types of the the aesthetic basic like this the ceramic or if not the the refractory materials are widely used even the ceramic is, is the refractory bricks are also can be designed again which are widely used in the industries also so this is about the the refractories the properties of refractories the super refractories neutral refractories basic refractories aesthetic refractories and the important classification of this the refractory materials and then characteristics of a good refractory materials so I, this is about this the concept that is refractories okay right thank you